And we are joined now by our good friend PJ Carlissimo. PJ, it's Michael and Don. How good you doing? Gentlemen, how are you guys? We're doing okay. Good. I'm wondering. Wondering. I hear you. Is there any way possible that you thought at the beginning of the season that the Knicks could be in this situation? Uh, no. No. I just. So what has gone wrong? Uh, just about everything. I mean, I, I just think it. Uh, I, I don't. I don't like. The moves necessarily, again, in retrospect, it's easy to go back and, and look. And, uh, you know, I mean, some of them, like, people don't even talk about world peace. And some of the moves on paper I liked. I thought that they were addressing some areas that, that would make them a better team. Um, it just got off to a bad start from the beginning between injuries, between JR not playing the first five games. And I, I just think everything was disrupted from the beginning, and then it was – Murphy's Law. Tyson's out for a while. Raymond was out for a while. They were never able to establish a flow. Um, you know, Andrea comes in, and, and to give him his due, in a sense, he was playing well, you know, d doing some things and trying to do some things differently. But it's just what, what, what went well, other than, you know, Melo has, has been fairly consistent the entire year. Everybody else has either been injured, been in and out of the lineup. Um, you know, we did. We talked way back at Christmas when I did a did a game, the Oak City game on on Christmas Day, and there were more guys in street clothes on the bench than there were in uniform. So I mean, I think it's been a series of things. I, I kept thinking, okay, when Tyson gets back, when Raymond gets back, when Pablo gets back, when you know Meta gets back, things are gonna. You know, they'll get a chance to keep the team together for two weeks at a time. Michael have the same lineup and things will fall in place. Well, it's never happened. It's it, it never happened primarily because I don't think they've had, you know, the bulk of the team together for a significant period of time, be it practice time or be it playing time. But I still, you know, yes, I thought they'd be better. I mean, it's a talented team. I think I don't think Mike's a good coach. I think he's an excellent coach. Um, but it just it's been a series of errors. They take a step forward, they take two back, and, you know, obviously the last couple of days just tack another one on, on the wall that, you know, give me something else that you didn't think could happen, and it's happened to them. Well, let's talk about Meta for a second. We had him in studio for about 45 minutes after he was let go, and the feeling is he didn't fit into Woodson's system. Then what did they go out and get him for in the first place? I mean, what is the, how does that speak to the dysfunction of an organization when they go out and get a player that does have – you know, championships uh, under his belt and try to force feed him down uh, the throat of a coach that didn't seem like he wanted him in the first place. Well, yeah, I, I'm not privy to that, and I'm not uh, avoiding the question. I would have thought he's a Mike type player from the outside. I mean, here's a guy who's a defensive guy. Now, again, offensively, he's always been a little, a little bit tough because he, he, he sometimes he has a tendency to get bullheaded and shoot the ball when maybe you don't want him to do. You know, he's got, maybe got more offensive confidence than is appropriate. But I mean, he's a, he's a defender. He's a physical defender, and and he, he can get you some boards. Like from you know, given some weaknesses of the Knicks in the past, it wouldn't surprise me if you told me Woody liked him and wanted him. Now, if, if it's accurate that it was the opposite, well, then that's a problem. You know, any anytime coaches and management, coaches and management are not going to agree on everything, but if, if a coach feels strongly about a guy, um, you're, you're barking up a tree of trouble when you bring a guy in and say, I don't care how you feel, we think he fits in. Well, that ain't going to happen. So, I, again, I, I don't know what, what the conversations were, what went down. Andrea comes in. I mean, you look at, at some of the additions. Some of the additions, I would have liked the meta edition more than the Andre. And I, I had Andre as an assistant coach in Toronto. I think he's a very gifted and skilled player, but primarily an offensive player, a three-point shooter, um, somebody who can put the ball on the floor a little bit. He's not a rebounder, uh, particularly uh, on the offensive class because of where he plays, and, he, and he's, not a, he's not a great defender. So, um, Baino Udri, I thought, was a good addition. So, I mean, you're talking to the right. The guys I thought were good additions for, to the team haven't worked out. So, um why they did these moves, um, whose ideas they were, that, that I don't know. But, again, in retrospect, it's easy to say it didn't work out. But I really do believe a lot of it has to do – I mean, look what's going on in Oak City right now. Russell comes back and everybody's going, oh, this is a disaster. I mean, they're three games in after all the, you know, good – 
years they've had with this guy playing. And it's, you just don't bring somebody back and things hit the floor smoothly. And that's a guy that's been with that team for years and knows the system. It, it takes time. Almost without exception, every team that's doing well this year has had their nucleus intact for most of the year.